Hola, manitos. ¿Cómo estamos? Welcome to Mel's Magic. I'm Magic Mel, and this is my spirit guide, Owl. <laughs> Welcome to episode 11 of season 4. I hope you're doing well. So, guys, you know that in my last episode, I felt compelled to pull some cards from the Light Series deck, and I, intuit, I intuited that I picked up on the Twin Flame journey, and I gave you one reading which I reflected upon afterwards. And as you know, there's always at least two sides to a story, if not more. <laughs> but we're bound to our subjectivity on how we interpret a given situation. So I reflected upon yesterday's journey and I really felt as if I was actually talking to a divine masculine. Now, I want to offer a different interpretation, same cards, but this time, addressed to the Divine Feminine. ¿De acuerdo? So let's go for it. You know the cards. They're exactly the same. We picked, first off, the Five of Swords in reverse. And remember, upright, the Five of Swords talks about coming out of a battle. You've been through hardships. Let me talk, let me address you as Divine Feminine, ¿vale? So you've been through hardships. A lot of battles. Um, a situation where you kept on trying to give your best, but still you didn't succeed. It's, it's as if you were working against the stream, paddling against the stream, and always wishing that the outcome would be different. <laughs> However, in a certain point of time, you said, this is it. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I've tried everything. Now, we pulled this in the reverse yesterday, remember? So in the reverse, it means you've caught your losses. You're done. You've laid down your guns. You're done with fighting. You're done banging your head against the wall, wishing things were different, giving your all and still feeling, de feeling depleted because the other, the other person in the situation wasn't on the same page, didn't understand your point of view, and you just said, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I am going to drop the guns, the battle, I'm surrendering. No point, no choice. No? So this was the first card. Our second card was the Queen of Cups in the reverse. Now, this is probably how you felt after this battle, after this <laughs> relentless battle of of giving your best and trying to pep the other one up, trying to pour all of your nourishing energy, and you have beautiful energy, into the situation, still feeling as if the other person didn't understand or wasn't able to meet you halfway. This actually depleted your core energy, which is the five, the queen of cups. This is the essence of you. You have so much to give. You have a full cup of love. And you love to help other people. You love to be there for other people. But perhaps you realize through this interaction that, again, you were just depleting yourself and it was leading nowhere. This is what left you depleted. That's why it came out in the reverse. No. Now, actually, you know that the universe always wants the best for us. Everything actually always works out for our highest good, whether we see it in the given situation or not, whether we're able to see it or not. And the thing about this twin flame journey so far, it's so difficult because once we are entangled with our emotions, we can't see the trees for the forest or the forest for the trees. I can't remember which way around. But stepping back and realizing that you were depleting yourself in a situation Taking a step back, you realize that actually you can only give if your own cup is full and that trying to fix another person was a pattern that came, that stemmed from childhood and that was actually perpetuating the cycle of codependency of you trying to rescue somebody where what was needed was for you to fill your own cup and come back to center. Look at you. You are this divine goddess who is completely in touch with her emotions. The water signifies emotions, nor intuition. 
you know how to connect to the divine. You have the connection. You have this beautiful ethereal energy. And you realize that this situation brought you back to your self-value. It made you realize that your energy is so precious and that you need to give it to yourself first. You're always there for other people. You love to give and you're, you're very generous. This doesn't mean, you know, thinking about ourselves and filling our own cup doesn't mean that we're not going to be there for, our, for others. However, you're learning to put yourself first. You're learning to value yourself. You're learning to be there for yourself before you go out and help others. You know now that actually it's by being in alignment and being energized and tending to your own needs, that is when your cup overflows and that is when true giving can take place. Because if we are depleted, if we are the depleted queen of cups and we nevertheless go beyond ourselves, go beyond our capacity and deplete ourselves, that is not true love. True love stems from self-love. It's an overflow energy from our self-love. If we deplete ourselves and give our power away by trying to fix other people, trying to force a situation, that actually shows a lack of trust and a trespassing of our own boundaries. So, beautiful Queen of Cups, you're learning a lesson, no? <laughs> the next card was the Knight of Wands. And as we mentioned in our last episode, the Knight of Wands is a fiery energy. It is like the stallion. <laughs> fiery, powerful, passionate. This energy means that you have, you are fiery, <laughs> divine feminine. You have a lot of passion and you want a passionate counterpart. However, let's track back. Realizing that you had to cut your losses, realizing that the situation was depleting you, made you come to terms with this in and out energy that your counterpart was presenting you with. In he came, making you feel all passionate and out he stormed again, perhaps out of fear of intimacy. Remember guys, this is just a story, I'm giving you a different perspective, but this is how I would interpret it from the Divine Feminine. Um, Divine, divine feminine's perspective you were led on by the hope by the resonance you felt this deep resonance with with your counterpart and because you are this passionate being again you opened yourself up you gave your all but you realized that actually this inconsistent fiery energy coming in and leaving again letting you hang making you wait being incoherent is only was only hurting you it was leaving you depleted it was turning your your bountiful cup of self-love upside down it was making you stretch beyond your means and it created a lot of inner conflict you were put in this tough situation you know you kept on trying to give your best, but again, with the Five of Swords in, in reverse, you were left hanging. It created a lot of conflict. Uh, as Like the Five of Wands here depicts, you see a group of women and men struggling to, to reach the fire, to keep the fire burning, but actually falling off their very unstable internal grid, you know? So again, outer conflict only means that there is inner conflict. We, the universe always presents us with a, a reflection of our own state of being, our own beliefs, our own mental map, our own paradigm. So you were confronted with a lot of external, external conflict, which actually mirrored your own inner incoherence. The situation left you in a state of despair because every time you tried to fix it, again, it just made you furious, angry, made you confused, and you actually fought with the other person. There was a huge, huge fallout. It was painful. It was painful because actually all you wanted was the Ten of Pentacles upright. 
you wanted your heart's desire to be fulfilled. You gave everything as you always do. You wanted the ultimate dream of finding this life partner, of creating, of building. You were ready to build. Well, so you thought. But again, it caused another heartbreak and you were left hanging. Everything changed, but your dream remained. That was actually one message I got from the universe when I felt like that. You felt like, <laughs> you know, looking at yourself, like, honestly, again, the same situation. Have I not learned my lesson? What am I doing wrong? You aren't doing anything wrong. You were actually called by spirit to activate your counterpart out of his passivity, out of his you are a catalyst for him to face himself, to face the truth of himself, the truth of being the divine masculine. You were the catalyst that spurred huge spiritual growth in your counterpart, but also in yourself. The encounter was beneficial for both of you, even though it was hard to see in the moment because so much it stirred up so much emotional pain, so much trauma from the past. And that's exactly what this connection was there was um, meant to bring you it was meant for you to come face to face with this baggage that you had been carrying and dragging along far too long you came to realize that you hadn't healed this core wound of abandonment that you were carrying still inside and that you kept on projecting this dream of being rescued this dream of oh if only my counterpart arrives if everything would be everything would be um, perfect, I would be happy. But no, <laughs> having, your, having this wish unfulfilled actually made you realize the brutal truth that no one is going to come rescue you, that no one is supposed to come rescue you, that you are strong enough. You need to stand in your power before the external can reflect that wholeness back to you. You are the one who has the power to create this, but only if you are in alignment. And the experience with your divine masculine left you, left you destroyed, but in a good way. It was a brutal mirror holding up the truth of your core wounding, that you were in the shadow of your divine feminine power, that you are not standing in your power yet. And what this whole situation made you realize was that you had to come into coherence with your own being, that you had to actually balance out the divine masculine within you first, before it can be reflected in coherence out there. This is what the journey is all about. Internal union first between divine masculine and divine feminine before outer union can take place. That was the necessary, painful but necessary lesson you had to go through. And there we go. We ended with the King of Cups. And again, the King of Cups is, look at him, he is serene, he's powerful, he is, what's the word? Tempered. He is in control in a good way. He's not. He's in touch with his emotions, but he's not overwhelmed by them. He sits actually on top of his emotions. He's wise. He's spiritual. He is divinely guided. He knows his purpose. This is your divine counterpart, but this is also an aspect inside of you, one that you need to cultivate. You need to come and stand in your power. You need to activate that masculine aspect that goes out there and uses your uses his or her voice to speak your truth, to ask for what you want, to state your needs, to go after your dream life. And that is how you will actually attract your external 3D King of Cups. It's only when you come into your own power that the universe will, <laughs> by reflection, bring your divine masculine back into your experience. So that what I want you to know, Divine Feminine, is that by coming into alignment, by accessing your core, your internal truth, your heart space, 
by speaking your truth, by shining your light, the light that is yours, filtered through your, through your individuality, but actually comes from source, by being that lighthouse and being so authentically you, by accepting yourself fully, by living your purpose, that is how you will attract your divine counterpart. It's not the other way around. It's not by sitting, waiting, hoping that your divine masculine will appear, that then your dream life will come into fruition. No. Do it for yourself first. Step into your power. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to myself. I'm part of this cycle. We are reflections of each other. Vale? So, to the divine feminines, we are on this journey together. And one thing I also want to point out is that, or oh, maybe I've said it before, but I want to reiterate this because it's very important. External union will happen once you have come into union with your divine masculine internally. And the ultimate purpose of the twin flame journey is not necessarily the romantic union of divine masculine, outer divine masculine, outer divine feminine. No, it's coming, it's living your soul purpose because you have been called, you are embodied in this lifetime to create great things. You have so many gifts that need to be shared with the world because we are in a time of great transitions where we need new leaders, we need voices of healing, of empowerment, and you have that voice, you have that gift that others need. So going beyond coming together with your divine counterpart, the purpose of the Twin Flames is for both parties to stand in their power, to be complete, to be whole, and to be free from their patterns, from the old paradigm, to actually serve the divine plan, which is for our highest good and the highest good of everyone involved. You're called to serve humanity and I'm not saying this in an arrogant, egotistical way, no. I'm, come, I'm saying this, I'm sharing this from a point of self-love, self-appreciation and self-worth. Because once you realize your divinity, your connectedness with everything around you, with all of creation, once you come into that state of consciousness, what exudes from you is joy. And the world needs more joy. The world needs more light. The world needs a different frequency of abundance. And we achieve this by accessing, by healing ourselves and by accessing our own internal light and sharing that with others. So shine your light, divine feminine. Speak your voice. Be the lighthouse for others. And you will inspire so, so many around you. And you will inspire divine masculine. Who can, you're gonna be a magnet. <laughs> A magnet for miracles and wonders and beauty. And you will attract everything you need, everything you, everything you long for, the abundance, the prosperity, the fulfillment, the love, because you will embody those aspects. You will not come from lack anymore. You will not project an internal void. You will actually um, channel divine light from the inside out. De acuerdo? So I'm actually pleased with this different perspective on the same cards we pulled yesterday. And again, this is just an interpretation. I am using my intuition to tell these stories. I'm a storyteller. But if anything resonates, um, let me know in the comments box below. Vale? I'm open to receive any feedback and messages from you. I'm Magic Mel. I'm, <laughs> I'm a reflection of you. De acuerdo? So, Let's end this again with infinite love and infinite gratitude. Al and I have your back. Look at these two hands. Our hands are so powerful. You are a powerful be being. Um, let's stand in our power and shine a light and rejoice. Be in joy. That is my ultimate message. Vale? I am Magic Mel. My channel is Mel's Magic. Do check out the other episodes from season one, two and three. There may might be a message that resonates with you. De acuerdo. Um, remember to hit the like button below. It really, really helps my channel. If you're inclined to make a donation, welcome. <laughs> that also helps my channels and helps me create these videos. And um, share with friends and family if you're so inclined. Vale? So have a beautiful start to this new week. We have full moon in Capricorn coming up. Huge portal again opening. Huge chance to release the old and welcome the new. De acuerdo. Let's surrender. 
and divine plan. And I hope you look at yourself in the mirror and realize how beautiful you are. Okay? Ciao. Talk soon.